Hey guys, Helen Hartsmith here again from the Heart of the Witches Path YouTube channel. Hope you're having a great day. Um, I am having a pretty good day, yeah. Um, so I'm here to do uh, another book review. It's actually kind of like an all-encompassing review thus far, if that makes any sense, and it will hopefully by the end of this video. So I want to talk about, I was, I was tossing around in my head uh, and actually talked to the roomie about this, uh, how I wanted to handle this because I'm currently reading this series. <laughs> so um, this is a the book uh, Discovery of Witches by Deborah Har Harkness. And this is the first book of the All Souls Trilogy. And so I'm super excited to talk to you about this particular book. Um, and um, I'm not technically done with the series, but I'm working on it. Um, I bought this book when it first came out and started reading it. And um, so reading, I don't always have time for reading. The roomie is over there being bad. You just need to be gone. <laughs> Um, so anyhow, what was I saying? Um, trilogy. Um, oh, I started reading this book. Sorry. Um, I started reading this book and sometimes, um, I just, I don't read fast. And so for me, I can actually get through a book faster if I listen to the audiobook. And so, um, Let's kind of talk about this book in particular first. So this came out in 2011. This is a big guy. This is uh, five, about 580 pages is how long this book is. But man, it is so worth it. Um, I really enjoyed this book. Deborah Harkness is a history professor. If you flip open to the back um, page of the of the sleeve here. Here we have Deborah Harkness, her likeness. Um, she is a professor of history at the University of Southern California. Um, apparently, she's pretty learned. She's received Fulbright, Guggenheim, and National Humanities Center fellowships. Um, and so she does, she writes scholarly uh, works and she also apparently has an award winning award winning wine blog. So um, unfortunately, that wine blog is not listed here on the um, the jacket, but that might be interesting. Um, so I I found this book interesting when I first started reading it. So it's not like it wasn't a good book and didn't hold my attention. I don't even know for sure why I didn't finish it. But generally, a lot of times uh, what happens is I get, I, I read a book for pleasure or what have you and then get busy at work, get busy with home life or what have you. So it's kind of difficult to finish it in a timely manner. So that's why audiobooks ha work so much better for me. Um, so this book uh, centers on a woman named Diana Bishop. And so Diana is also a professor of history. She teaches at Yale. And the book opens up with her doing research into alchemy um, at the Bodleian Library at Oxford University in England. And so um, Diana happens to be um, a daughter of a witch family. So yes, witches, vampires, and demons exist in this world. This is a contemporary setting and uh, those supernatural creatures exist. No werewolves, which um, I'm kind of surprised by. Um, there was, there's a mention made of a werewolf. Um, so, but I, it had, I don't remember exactly what the reference was, but there's no werewolves in here. And, and for a supernatural um, genre piece, uh, that's kind of 
interesting to me. Um, but okay, it, not a detraction whatsoever. So um, Diana is doing her research and she is originally from the New England area in, um, in America. And her family actually lives in Madison, Massachusetts. No, 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 Madison, New York. I'm sorry. Um, and her ancestor is Rebecca Bishop, who is one of the women that were killed during the Salem witch, Salem witch trials. And so um, witches is kind of a hereditary thing. Um, you're born into a witch family and things like that. So um, I'm trying to give you like a little bit of details about the world without giving away too much. So anyhow, Diana's parents uh, were killed when she was young. And um, as a result of that one particular event and, you know, some other things, she decided that she didn't want to practice magic. She was not interested. She um, did her best not to use magic and things like that. And that's why she was um, a professor of alchemy. That's or historical professor studying alchemy. Let's kind of put it that way. Um, so she meets a vampire by the name of Matthew Claremont. And he is a geneticist at this point in his existence. And um, Diana, in her research, comes across this uh, ancient volume. And it's referred to as Ashmole 782 and it's referred to as Ashmole 782 because this book was part of a collection that uh that belonged to a man and Ashmole was his last name and then the 782 was like the number of the volume within the library and so that library was obtained by the Oxford Library and so that was part of her research was to look into that book and um it's a as it turns out, it's a pretty powerful um, relic, I guess I'll call it, that a lot of people are looking for. And so that book becomes kind of like a, a catalyst for... Um, for the entire trilogy, you know, locating it, locating its secrets and finding out about it. That all becomes part of the story of the All Souls trilogy. And so um, getting through this first book, I was like amazed. Um, Deborah Harkness does a really amazing job of mixing the history that she knows with creating this amazing world that um, that has characters that I've grown to love in such a very short time. And um, she really creates uh, this, this wonderful little family of very individualized people. And so um, I was... I was amazed by how well uh, this book ended, and so I immediately wanted to get into the second book. Um, unfortunately, this first book is the only book that I have a physical copy of. The second book is called, and I'm going to make sure that I, because I've been saying it improperly, um, Shadow of Night is the second book, and that came out in 2012. And then the third book is called The Book of Life. And so I have finished listening to the second book, Shadow of Night. And in that particular volume, I'm going to try to keep this, I'm going to kind of keep my detail talking kind of to a minimum because I don't want to spoil anything. Um, but at the end of A Discovery of Witches, Matthew and Diana make the choice to go back in time. Things happen and they're able to go back in time. And so they end up going back to 1590 and they go to London. And so uh, they run across some interesting characters like Christopher Marlowe, uh, Queen Elizabeth I, um, Emperor uh, Rudolph, um, in Prague. So they do a little bit of traveling um, and they're doing, they're, they're doing things. Okay. <laughs> um, so that's pretty much what the second book was about. And again, you meet 
more incredible people that become a part of this family or are a part of this family that you didn't meet in the first book. And again, very diverse, very, um, there, I found myself at times crying. I found myself laughing throughout all of these books. And so it's just, it's very delightful to come across a, a series of books that's just so well written and very well executed. So uh, I happen to be about five hours into the final book, um, the book of life. And so I've got about I think it's around 18 hours left to listen to. So this is why I was kind of um, hesitant about, you know, should I do a video where I just talk about the one book or the two books? But I kind of wanted to do, um, I wanted to talk about the entire trilogy. Um, plus, there's like some other stuff that I wanted to talk about in terms of these books and what's happened with them. Um, so <clears throat> I know that I haven't finished the third book, but I'm going to go out on a limb here and I'm going to say, um, because I'm enjoying it very much so far, that I'm hoping that it's going to, that this high is going to continue to the end of the, of the run of this trilogy. Um, so I'm just going to kind of leave it as saying, um, if my mind is changed, I will let you know somehow. Um, but as it stands right now, I, I'm i loving everything that I've been exposed to thus far uh, with the books. And I'm very, um, very much anticipating finishing the trilogy and seeing what happens in the end. Um, I've looked at some, some spoilers online and read some uh, synopses and things like that. And so there, there's, there's some interesting stuff happening, but of course I don't know what the ultimate end game is. Um, but man, there's like intrigue, there's like all kinds of good things in here. And so I just, I can't say enough good about it. And so as far as, um, I will give you a brooms for the first two books since I've actually finished them. So for this book, I'm definitely, let's just say for both of them, I'm giving a five out of five, um, which I feel is something that I don't often do with books just because they're, they're lacking in some way. Um, but I really feel like, and I think I've said this, that Deborah Harkness did a really good job of creating this world and filling in the, doing the character development and the timeline, my God, because Matthew, the, the vampire, is over 1,500 years old. He fought in the Crusades. I mean, he has such a rich history, and she must have this like all planned out. I mean, it's insane, the detail. So um, I, I just feel like it was such an, a well-executed story. Um, and like I said, I'm really looking forward to the end. So I won't give five brooms yet to the end. You never know that something could happen and I could be thoroughly peeved. I'm hoping that that does not happen. Knock on wood, that does not happen. Um, so there is the trilogy. So let's kind of talk about some other things because how can you limit such a rich world to just three books? Now, they're all pretty sizable. I Because I don't own the, the other two books, I don't know what the page numbers are on those books. But I want to say that... Uh, the first book on audio was somewhere between 20 and 24 hours. And I think the second book was that as well. And so I'm at about probably about 23, 24 hours with the final book. So they're probably all about this, this big if you're, if you prefer reading a physical book over, um, over an audio book. Um, so what else is there? You can't limit this amazing world to just three books, even though they're nice sized. So uh, this year, 
Deborah released a book called Times Convert, and this is part of the world, and this kind of takes place prior to the trilogy. Um, I will be listening to this book after finishing the trilogy, so maybe I'll do <laughs> another kind of video kind of talking about this, um, but it takes place during the American Revolution, and Matthew it will be seen in that book along with his vampiric son, Marcus. Um, so I'm kind of um, intrigued to see Matthew where he's not connected to Diana because he's definitely, the. as it comes out in the story, he's a bit of a different person since meeting Diana. And so I'm interested to see what Matthew is like before Diana. So that's kind of cool. Um, is that, I know there were some other books too that weren't necessarily books by Deborah, but some that I thought were interesting. So there's a book called The World of All Souls, A Complete Guide to a Discovery of Witches, Shadow of Night, and the Book of Life. And so, okay, where did you go? <sighs> Not being helpful, my tablet is. Actually, it's more like <laughs> I'm, I'm on Goodreads. Uh, I, which I like Goodreads um, a great deal, but this is kind of the first time I'm I'm usually on Goodreads on like a computer or what have you. Um, so it's not it's not behaving. Let's put it that way. So um, so I'm trying to stall and stretch while I like reload. Sorry. So I'm not entirely sure. Um, I think that. Because uh, I looked at this before, um, but I, it's not letting me open it up. But I want to say that it was kind of like a historical guide for the time period and for the things that they reference, the things and people that they reference in the trilogy. There's also something called the All Souls Real-Time Reading Companion. I'm not sure what that is, but I'm kind of intrigued by it. And then there's... Um, there's something called A Discovery of Witches, Volume 1 and 2. Um, and again, it's not... Okay, well, okay, so that is by Deborah Harkness. So are you going to show me... Are you going to show me what it is? I don't know, but so there's there's some additional books to the world that's uh, that's not necessarily part of the fictional story, but they're almost like some. So if you're a history buff and you, you know, want to learn more about Elizabethan England or um, there a lot of the story takes place in France, too. There's big chunks that take place in France. Um, I'm imagining that that kind of information would be in there kind of a thing. So. Um, so, yeah, if somebody knows more about those kind of like extra books and if there's like a video or something that you can direct me or us to, um, I would say, you know, put that in the uh, the comments below. OK, um, because I I I haven't seen them in stores, but I haven't really been looking for them either. So, you know that kind of thing. So another thing that I wanted to talk about that has to do with the All Souls trilogy is that this year uh, there was a television program that was produced in the UK and aired on, I want to say it might have been ITV or something along those lines. Um, and it looks as if um, so there's eight episodes. Um, it's starring Matthew Good and I can't remember her name. Matthew Good, I just remember him. Um, so there's eight episodes. 
Um, it was this fall, the final episode aired like November 2nd. And I believe that it's coming to an American um, network, but I don't have any details on when. Um, so if you're interested in more information about that, you know, when I find something out, I can share it if y'all are interested. Um, I happened to uh, view these eight episodes and I am here to tell you, I highly recommend the episodes too. Um, I, if you know me and my tastes when it comes to uh, movies and books and things like that, when a book gets adapted into either a movie or a television show, I can be very hard on liking the project and the end result. Um, I think that they did an okay job with the Harry Potter movies, for instance, but of course we lost a lot of detail and that can happen. Um, but I can be very harsh. I can be a harsh mistress when it comes to liking something, especially if it's from a book or a series that I really enjoyed the series or the book. Um, I'm here to tell you, Five brooms on that too. That is so, it is so good. They did an amazing job of adapting the story from the book to the script. Um, the, so this first eight episodes, it basically covers the events in A Discovery of Witches. So this series has been greenlit to do two more seasons. And so I would anticipate that we're looking at a season per book. That would be my guess. Um, it's so good. The magic that they deal with, um, the way that they showed it, very well done, very believable for me. Um, what was the other? Th oh, so these books are pretty much told from Diana's perspective. You know, she it's like a first person, she's telling the story. One thing that I enjoyed about the um the series is that as you kind of make your way through the books, you find out some details about other characters' perspectives that you kind of find out after the fact. Well, the show is actually taking you in real time for pretty much everybody. So if there's a character that maybe you don't meet in the books until the second book or the third book, you're meeting them as they're actually introduced to the story in the show. So I like that um, because you're kind of getting the whole story all at once and allowed to kind of take that journey. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah, because I don't want to give away too many details. So I think I'm just going to stop there. If you get a chance, so it's called A Discovery of Witches, just like the first book. Um, so if you get a chance to check that out, I highly recommend it. Ooh, it's so good. So let's do a wrap up. The show, A Discovery of Witches, I'm giving five brooms. The book, A Discovery of Witches, I'm giving five brooms. The book, Shadow of Night, I'm giving five brooms. I'm reserving a final broom assignment number to the final book. A the, in it, the book is called The Book of Life. I'm going to reserve judgment on that until I've actually finished it because that's what a responsible person does, right? So, but I'm anticipating that it's going to be just as good. <laughs> I hope I'm not jinxing myself just by saying that um, because I'll be super disappointed if I've like talked this up so much and then. <laughs> so anyhow, have you read these books? I want to know about it. If you've read them, what are your thoughts? Did you enjoy them? Did you think they were a bunch of poppycock? What did you think? Let me know in the comments below. In the description box, I will put uh, Amazon links to, I'll do an Amazon link to like Deborah Harkness's 
kind of author page. So that will list all of the books. And so if you're interested in purchasing them, um, you can do that. I would suggest too that if you are, if you're someone who enjoys doing the um, audiobooks, but yet you like to read too, I know that Kathy recently has been purchasing it's kind of a package deal, um, and I don't know that much about it because I don't do that, but it's kind of a package deal where you, I think you might purchase probably the audiobook, or it could be the other way around, but you purchase the audiobook and you get a digital download as well of the book, and so what you can do is say you're, they, they sync together. So say you're listening to the audiobook on your iPhone, okay? And I don't think that this would work if you were doing the audio on an iPod unless it was the touch, because I think the touch ones are, um, they connect to Wi-Fi. See, I am a five generation iPod person and mine isn't like why. Wi-Fi. So anyhow, you're listening to the book, say you stop and you have, you don't have time to listen to more, but you would like to read more. So you open up the, the ebook and it will take you to the spot that you stopped listening to. So you can continue reading from there. And then when you're done there, you can go back to the iPod and you can, and it will, it basically holds your bookmark between the two things. Kathy does this. She really likes it. I don't know much more besides that, but I'm kind of intrigued by it. So I guess let me know if you do those too. All right. So let's, I'm going to stop talking now because my throat's starting to be sore and I need something to drink. So we're going to wrap this video up. If you liked this video or learned something from it, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel for goodness sakes. Um, What else? There's links in the description box to social media like Instagram and things like that. So be sure to check that out if you're so inclined. And um, yeah, I think that's it. That's going to wrap it up for this video. So thanks for watching. Thanks for taking the time to walk the path for a little while with me. Until next time, blessed be.